Hey guys, thanks for coming back for the second part of Sleeping to be Awake. If you haven't watched the first part, then I'd suggest you watch it first, because this one's going to pick up mid-book. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Dr. Plague, signing off. As I was lying on the cold metal table, I began to be more confident in my journey to finally get this over with. I began to close my eyes in a calm fashion, thinking on everything that had happened thus far. Starting to feel the warm pressure on my chest, I could feel the sedative medication doing its job. I'm here, that's all I remember saying to myself, trying to reassure myself that soon enough I'll be in another part of my past memories to get done with this whole deeply plotted plan that went horribly wrong. I remember my eyes closing and then just waking up as if I had closed them for a brief second. Looking around, I started to figure out that I was in the town of Leckworth started thinking, and as I looked on the ground, there was a piece of broken mirror. Looking at the mirror, I saw a reflection of myself and realized I was 17 again. This was around the time when I had started doing ghost hunting with my friends. I had stopped going because one night I had a very terrifying experience. I was walking in the closed down facility, near the morgue. I was by myself as the rest of my friends were scattered throughout the building. I began to feel a dark presence behind me, and I turned around and saw a very dark figure coming towards me. I remember passing out and waking up near my friend, screaming in terror. As I was remembering all of this, I heard my friend Jenna say, What's wrong, Chris? Getting bad vibes? Reluctant to answer the question, I finally responded, Well, to be honest, no. I'm just not really feeling good. She looked confused as if I was possessed or something. Well, Chris, I don't really get it. You called us here to do ghost hunting, and I mean, we've been doing this for like two years straight. What the hell changed? I looked around, thinking how I could even try to begin to explain everything going on. At that point, though, the only answer I could give was a lame one. Hey, look, people change, and I mean, we're older now. If you only knew what I'd been going through, or what I know, you wouldn't want to go in there either. We both stared at each other, kind of shocked, because we've never really argued about anything much like this. Then, the tension finally broke. Chris, out of all the years I've known you, you've never acted like this. I mean, what's going on? You can tell me. You can trust me. I was very confused at this point. Did, did the scientist hear the conversation I'd had when I woke up? Had they heard me talking to Nurmac? So many questions were running through my mind at this point, so I said to myself, Fuck it. What do I have to lose? Sweat was running down my face out of anxiety. Look, if I explain this to you, promise me you won't look at me differently, okay? She looked scared. I could tell. She looked at me and gave me the sign as to let me know it's okay. I'm here for you. I looked at her, forming thoughts in my head like I was a mad scientist since I was five years old, I had these dreams that felt real. I'd wake up in a lab type place in the future. When I was 19, I had this dream, but after having the dream, I realized it was all true. I talked to this guy who was one of the people who helped put me under for this operation. I eventually formed this operation, I guess, but the people who took control after I had gone wanted to do something different with my work. Now I'm going through all this for their amusement. That's all I know at this point. A sudden silence swept the area, and Jenna began to look at me like I was crazy and needed help. She got a little nervous, too. I could tell. Look, Chris, I don't want to sound mean, but I think you need help. I'm going to call your mom. You, you should head over to Crisis Center. They really do help, you know. Now I started thinking, why did I even bother? Look... If it'll make you feel better, go ahead. I know I'm not crazy, and that all this is true. If you can't take my word as a friend of ten plus years, then I guess we really shouldn't be friends. She looked at me in amazement that I had even conjured up these words. Chris, out of all the years I've known you, I can honestly say you are at your lowest point, and I can't be anywhere near you when you realize you're fighting a war with your mind. You're not going to win. Why don't you just give up and go along with it? I was sitting there thinking why this sounded odd, and then it hit me. That wasn't Jenna. It was one of them. Look, Jenna, just call my mom. I'm out of here. 
I'm gonna go to Crisis. Before I go, just answer me one thing, though. Why? She looked at me in a stern fashion and replied, You did this to yourself. We had no part. The minute she said that, I began to realize that all the people in this hallucination, or virtual world, or whatever it was, are in actuality the people controlling this whole experiment. And they wanted nothing more than to hurt me. Hurt my progress on fixing this mess. But I won't let them do it. I've got too much at stake. Suddenly, my mom pulls up in her town and country van, looking busted like I remember. She looked at me as she pulled close and yelled at me to get in the car now. I looked at her as if to say, seriously, I'm in a supposed crisis and you're yelling at me? All right, mom, I'm coming. She nodded furiously and I waved goodbye to Jenna for reasons only I understood. The entire car ride, we were silent, didn't even look at each other. We finally got to the crisis center and then things became a little bit druggy feeling. I turned around and there were the men in lab coats. I turned towards my mom and mouthed, help. All she said was, it's for the best, sweetie, trust me. I began to have a panic attack, not knowing what was going to happen. But I found that at the same time, I didn't care any longer. I was just under too much stress to think on where I was going to go next. That was the exact minute I passed out. Think he'll find out soon that he won't win? Can't say for certain. He has someone helping him. Apparently, they knew where we were going to be. There's no telling what could happen. We need to watch him closer in the future. Yes, sir. That was when I blacked out. I was awoken by a song played on my clock radio after what felt like hours of sleep. I opened my eyes in shock to see where I was at. I was at the beginning of this whole journey, back at the day it started, my 19th birthday. It was the morning still, so I hadn't done anything yet. What were they trying to have me do? What was going to happen now? All these questions running through my head, and yet I can't find myself one true answer. I got out of my bed and threw on some jeans that were on the ground. I threw a shirt on and just shook off the entire thought of being subliminally implanted in my thoughts. Walking down the stairs, I started to feel as if this wasn't my apartment, as if something was missing. When it hit me like a ton of bricks, where's my roommate? The day of my birthday, in the morning, my roommate was lying on the couch and, well, had woken up to me running downstairs in a very anxious manner. I was like a five-year-old on Christmas morning running to the tree for his presents. Oddly enough, it seemed as if I never had a roommate. I began to think to myself, if I can't have friends and I can't have a roommate, am I destined to stay lonely in this pathetic excuse of an experimental dream gone wrong, constantly rearranging my life? that I had already become accustomed to? Why the fuck did I have to think of such an idea? And what was the fucking point? I mean, if I'm that smart in the future, why didn't I think of a plausible outcome once I was under? I began to just think for a second. It doesn't matter, really. I'll never be able to change the past by constantly trying to find answers to my questions. I just stopped thinking about that and got back onto the track to find out what the fuck happened to my roommate, if I had one. I walked outside my apartment building, thinking there was no way any of this could get any stranger, and unveiling that it already had. My head was still thinking about the song that had been playing when I was waking up, maybe submitting my things into my mind. Was it a message, or just a coincidence that I just happened to wake up when my clock started playing that particular part of the song? All these questions, though, had no answers. Again, back to square one, it seemed. Standing outside the apartment, I began to see if there was any way to get answers by getting any ordinary information that I knew versus the new information being told and this new memory being recreated. The first idea that popped into my never-ending mindless thought process was to let me just ask the apartment tenant if they knew where my roommate might be. Starting to walk to the door, I noticed that my tenant's name was missing from the bell service we had buzzed people into the building with. So I buzzed 4A, my next door neighbor, to see if they knew what number the tenant apartment is, and for that matter, who was the tenant? Buzz, 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 crackle. Hello, can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for the tenant of the building. Yeah, no problem. His apartment is number 4B. His name's Chris. Here, I'll buzz you in. 
The door buzzed and unlocked. I couldn't help believe what I had just heard. I'm the tenant? There had to be some kind of mistake. There is no way that I'm a tenant. I walked up to the elevator and pushed the fourth floor button. It stopped at the third floor to let someone in. It was a man with a trench coat, maybe in his 30s. He was wearing a brown fedora, and I looked him up and down as he came in. Suddenly, he turned to me in a deep, scratchy voice. He muttered, soon it will be done, soon. I hit the fourth floor and got off, turned back only to notice he was gone. What the fuck is going on here? I got to my apartment, walked to the door slowly, looked at the name on the door and read, tenant below. My heart dropped into my stomach, not knowing what year it was or what the hell was going on. I unlocked my door, walked to my bed, and sat down for a second, holding my head in my hands. What am I going to do? Who can even help me? They can't break me. Thinking on all that, I concluded that, well, maybe I should just go to sleep and finish this. Wake up in the lab. Stay awake without getting drugged and take back control. The fight may have been started by them, but I'm going to be the one to finish it with a victory in my mind, soul, and heart. Even if I die trying to win, I will succeed in my mind. I'll die for a better future for others, not to endure what I and the government want. I'll end it now. All is fair in love and war, but in this situation, all is fair in war. Lying down, I began forming a plan of action to help me succeed once I woke up in the lab. Starting to drift into the horrifying feeling of fear mixed with sadness, I felt soon I'll be done with this. What else could I do at this point anyway? I've come this far, at least I think I have. Lying there, I realized I was beginning to start to fall asleep. Feeling everything starting to get lighter, I knew I'd be asleep soon. Blackness started to surround every inch of my room. I knew what was next. A flash of light exploded in front of me. I was here and very awake. I started ripping off the wires attached to me and it began getting brighter. I scurried off the table and raced to the door. You thought it would be that easy? The loudspeaker crackled. As I turned the knob, I realized it was locked. I didn't take the moment to think of a plan, but since it's not that easy, why don't you make it a little harder? Why fuck with me? Why not just let me figure it out? But, I guess you have. A sudden feeling of pressure pushing on my chest is what I felt after hearing that. What the fuck did I figure out? Nothing. That's what. I'm not sure where you're getting your damn information from, but it sure as hell isn't correct. Laughter is all I heard for the next two minutes. Well, my source is very reliable. I assure you, I'm pretty sure you know it. Beginning to get annoyed at the whole conversation, I figured I might as well ask some questions. As I clear my throat, I begin to formulate some questions in my mind. Look, I just want to know what the whole story is. If that's okay with your plan. Well, sounds reasonable to me. Come and meet me down here then. Hearing footsteps walking downstairs, I felt I might have just majorly screwed myself. The door began to open in a slow, agonizing fashion. My heart started pounding like that of a scared child in a haunted house. The door opened, and my heart dropped into my stomach. It's been him all along, and I never knew it. No wonder he wasn't around for all those years. Looking around as if I'd been pranked, I wasn't sure how to handle anything about this whole situation. So, you aware of my importance yet? Or should I tell you? I stood astonished by my family members being against me. I can honestly say I couldn't have seen this coming at all. Grasping for what little air I had left in my frozen lungs, I asked the one question I had had since I was a child. Where were you? He stood there and said with a slightly depressing tone, the one who goes without his entire life learns true happiness. One who is more fortunate learns true sadness. Looking at him as if he was Nostradamus, I replied, so you did without me, and what true happiness did you gain? Leisurely, he responded, all of this, including seeing you and all your troubles, in a sense. I've always been there, son. 
Stunned by the response, I stood there in a state of shock, thinking about how fucking deep this was. In his mind, I had gotten from all this bullshit with these experiments. One remark came to my thoughts. So, you feel you're justified not being in my life from childhood till now by thinking all you had to do to fix a big problem was speak a quote and try to make me think it was all for the better? You must be out of your goddamn mind to believe for one millisecond that I would accept that as a sorry. Like, you did nothing wrong. You're pathetic, and a sorry excuse for a father, son, and human being. I would be ashamed of what you put me through. To just get rid of all the guilt you have. That is, if you even can comprehend what guilt is, or if you even feel guilty. You disgust me. At that point, I looked him sternly in his face, and with a look of disbelief, seeing that he felt he did what needed to be done, and felt he made up for the lost time from my childhood as well. Well, son, it's hard to explain why everything I just said is true. Look, I'll try my best to help you understand why what I said should forgive everything. You feel I did not provide for you all those years that have passed. Then I'll tell you, if it will help you to understand. I feel it will make you understand this entire situation a little better. I felt as if there wasn't any way he could change my opinion of him, or my feelings towards this man that was my father, or should I say, the ghost of my father. He began to clear his throat in such a fashion as if what he had to say would answer and explain everything I wanted to know, and would tell me exactly what I needed to hear. Looking directly in his eyes, he began. It started when you were born. I, at the time, was a scientist working with the government at a base well known by the public due to a UFO conspiracy. To us, it's called Groom Lake Section 3, Grid Map 2, Level 1. But most of you guys know it as Area 51. Being well known for my work on experimental mind manipulation, as well as memory manipulation to change past events to what we need to implement our own obstacles as a test of strength, will, and determination to complete all the obstacles. The goal in the end of the experiment was to create the best soldier ever created, one without emotions to be able to follow through with orders most soldiers wouldn't do for the main fact that they had a conscience, something that the experiment would remove from the subject. The plan was to eliminate any emotion and conscience from the subject to do what needed to be done. The problem was, we accomplished what we wanted, but at a cost. The soldier wouldn't listen to orders given, because somewhere in our calculations, we messed up and created a psychopath devoid of human emotions. This creature wanted nothing more than to murder for the sake of murder, to figure out what was reality and what was fabricated by us. In short, I recruited you, my son, knowing that you had the willpower and the smarts, but the experiment was breached by an unknown person. They messed up the work we'd been doing, and now you're in sort of a, well, I'm not really sure. It's not real. The fabrications are some mixed up kind of thing with your past. You'll always be questioning your own reality. Which is why I told every worker not to revive you to a conscious state due to this, this very problem. And at this point in time, there is not a way to fix or reverse the damage. Believe me, son, my intentions were good, but my downfall was trusting workers I personally don't know. I can't trust them, you see. I know you have a lot of questions. You want answers, too. So with that being said, ask what you need to ask and I'll answer them, as much as I can anyway. This is completely unexpected, is what I was thinking in my head. He did what I thought he could not, which was to explain in full what happened. As for forgiveness, he won't be receiving any for the fact that he couldn't even apologize for everything he's done. Knowing that there wasn't much else to ask, except for one thing, I asked it. Why? He stared emotionlessly into my glassy eyes, filling with an array of emotions. I did 
what I thought was best for you and the family. For the family, that's the only line he could muster up in response. I guess I was hoping he would have something more meaningful to say, as if it would make the pain go away from all this. I began just trying to piece all these things together when it hit me. This isn't it. This is only the beginning. I knew it just then. I could feel it. And I knew exactly what was going to happen. And it did. The boom was the only sound I heard at first. Then I heard along with it other noises that crept in after it. I'm here. This is just grand. Chris, man, you need to chill out, bro. I mean, I know it's your birthday, but... I ain't trying to get arrested. Get home, dude. Fuck. I knew this was gonna happen. Why? Why couldn't it just stop after that last somewhat meaningful conversation? Yeah, no problem. I'll see you soon. Playing it off, but damn. What am I gonna do with this? This is getting out of hand. I began walking to my car, taking the keys out of my jacket. I started to feel as if this shit wasn't over. I got my keys out and unlocked my car door, getting inside got this strange sense of relaxation mixed with fear. Just put the key in the ignition and go is what I kept saying to myself to make sure I didn't just sit there the entire time. Finally, after 10 seconds, I started the car. I pulled out and started making my way home. Ring, ring, ring went my phone. Hello? Chris, you need to get out. Please stop whatever you're doing and go to your apartment. Who is this? It doesn't matter. Just go dial tone was all I heard. She had just hung up. I made my way home and raced up the stairs to my apartment. But why? I unlocked my door only to find everything was in place. Why was I rushed here so fast? Ring, ring, ring went my phone again. New text message from unknown number. I opened my phone the minute I saw it and saw something that would scare me to death. Chris, you need to fall asleep. All you just went through was fake. This, what I'm telling you now, is real. Please, for your sake, fall asleep. I rushed to the bed. I took a Xanax and an Ambien and hoped for the best. I began feeling the effects of the medication. They were moving in quickly. I was asleep. I'm here. Okay, now what do I do? I'm right back where I began. Does nothing seem as if anything is going to change? I mean, honestly, what do I have to do to be done with all this? answerless questions that I continue to ask myself. The entire time, I was wondering who the damn person on the phone was and what did they mean. Feeling the intense pressure building up in my chest, I realized that everything I just went through, all those times I woke up in the lab, they were all fabrications as well. Thinking on that, I wondered if the same can be said about the encounter with my father. Is he that deranged? It was happening, and I could feel it. I was going to wake up soon to this bullshit comedy sketch show, which is my life now. I started waking up. I knew it was time, and when I did, I began to get scared. Where's the lab? I woke up on a nice house, laying next to a woman, and in the background, I could hear kids yelling in excitement. What day is it? Where am I? That's all I wanted to know. I began to figure it out soon enough. It was Christmas Day, but I'm not sure where I am yet. I start to figure all this out as I notice the woman next to me waking up. Merry Christmas, honey. What the hell is going on here? Now I have a wife? Trying to figure out what's going on, I say, Morning, beautiful. How did you sleep? She began yawning and stretching her arms. Well, I had a wonderful night last night. It's nice that your parents have the kids for the weekend. Kids? Seriously? I'm still a kid myself, and I couldn't fathom the thought. Not that I don't like kids, but I mean... I didn't even experience life yet, and now I own a house with kids and a wife. What else am I going to run into? Waking up, I got out of bed and stretched, beginning to try to do what I would probably do normally, I suppose. I found my dresser and got some clothes out. Then I went to the shower. As I was going to get in, I noticed that the knob on the shower looked like the one I saw at the beginning of all this, when I was in my mom's house. What the fuck is this shit? Honey, do you know where my keys are? Thinking of what I might normally say, I answered, No, I thought you put them up last night. Feeling scared, thinking maybe she might think I'm sick or something. For the fear of being brought to the hospital, I had to play everything right. I guess I did. I found them. They were in the dresser drawer. 
I turned the knob and the water began pouring out on me. Then I began to feel weird. Getting out of the shower, I noticed everything was going strange. Everything just felt off, like I was fucked up on salvia. Walking to the door, I heard a scream. I ran into my room and saw no one. Then I saw it. It was a white light, just in the bathroom, similar to the one I saw on the bus that day. The door opened, and when it did, the light dimmed, and for just a second, this man was looking out of it. He could have been my real father, almost. He started walking out. Christopher, look, a lot of stuff is happening right now. I know you don't know what's real or not, but listen. I know it's hard, but always imagine something that makes you feel good, and I guarantee that light will shine. I'll be there. Deep words from a person I barely knew. And yet, it's like he really cares for me. Strangely enough, he told me to sit down. We needed to talk. The man began staring at me and said, I'm someone you know, and I care about you deeply. I know you may not know me or even believe me with all this that's going on, but there are some things I need to tell you. Before I can, though, I need you to go to sleep and wake up. I'll help you, but you have to trust me. Wow. In a sort of emotional manner, I began to get teary-eyed, knowing, real or not, someone cares about me, and that was one thing I wanted from the beginning. Okay, I trust you. What do I gotta do? He explained to me in a manner as if I were a soldier going into combat. You need to go to sleep to be awake, and to do that, we need to get to the source, which is a man of great power in the New World military. We have to get you back to the one memory where you two first met, and we will be done, thinking on how easy it was to respond. Okay, so you just want me to go to sleep? He nodded. Laying down, I realized he was my father. He's got to be. Feeling the intense heat and pressure on my chest, I knew it was only a matter of time before I would be going to another memory again. Which one was the question I kept thinking about? I was beginning to get a darker, more evil feeling in the room. But why? I was under, and I knew it. But why wasn't I waking up? What the fuck was going on now? Am I stuck in the in-between? Did I die? I don't know, but it sure as hell was scary. Then I began to see some light. I was going into a new memory, and it didn't feel bad. It was just wrong. Waking up, I saw nothing but black, dark clouds outside. Where am I? At that moment, a man pushes into the room that I'm in. Sir, the enemies are pushing the front. We need more weapons and men. Sir? No. Damn it, no. This can't be happening. What did I do? It's all over. I know it. This was the moment I was dreading from the beginning. The new world is here, and the humans aren't the only beings here anymore. Good evening, my little creeperonies. Thanks for joining me for tonight's reading. I hope you liked it. If you do, go check out the writer's work. That's Christopher Smoked Cougar. He's on Amazon, and you can go ahead and buy his books if you want to. They're both up there. I'd like to thank him for letting me read his work and for being a part of this show. If you'd like to support the show, we've got a Patreon linked below, or you can just buy some of my books on Amazon. Both of them are below if you'd uh, like to have a look. And as always, thanks for joining me. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening.